I'm doing a little bit of a different series because pretty soon my country's going to go for another independence referendum and uh, take the lessons they learned from the last one and hopefully allow one that's actually free and fair well, as, as much as it can be when we have a state-sponsored media uh, propaganda broadcaster known as BBC, which, funny enough, YouTube make no warnings about. And this series of videos, I'm going to try not to swear. My, I know I do that already. And I'm also going to uh, probably use words funnily, like when I say the word king core, right? I, I won't use it with C's because you won't believe that besides the, you know, shedding thousands of subscribers across all the platforms, especially Twitter and YouTube, um, shadow banning is a thing. Um, even that word uh, baning uh, I just used, but I mean, I, I, I'll try not to use it in the future, but I, did, I already used it. These things can be used, if you imagine it like a random effect. So for example, when it comes to subscribing someone, someone saying, uh, you know, I want to subscribe to uh, this channel, I want to get notifications, right? Let me just sit down here rather than go outside. I'm actually in Glasgow today in Scotland, and I'm parked across from the, um, uh, you've got the botanical gardens right here. I'll try to show you, but I don't want to go outside and the traffic is too loud, it's on the main road. Um, so yeah, these notifications, for example, what will happen there is, um, I'm just looking at it from a logical point of view. I'm an IT specialist, so I had to study everything from database management to programming to all aspects of of, um, of IT to understand how how things work when you program them. So I would, I would, it would be obvious to me that the way that they do this is because um, I've got some channels I subscribe to and I do get notifications, but only sometimes. For example, Black Pigeon Speaks and he's got a secondary channel called Felix Rex. Uh, I don't really like this guy very much, but I like, I like he's, he's a bit of a, a right-wing twat who's a, an elitist on the English side because he hasn't read history properly. But I do, see, there's a difference between someone who's a moron and someone who's not. A normal person, you'll still listen to what an ad and, and it's a person you don't like has to say. Um, because, you know, just because someone, let's say they've got a different policy on immigration, doesn't mean that everything they say about electronics is wrong. You know what I mean? And it takes a, a very idiotic person to think that way, to, to, to censor themselves effectively, right? In the case of notifications, what would happen there is they would just put it through some randomizer. So in other words, there'd be an extra step instead of does this person subscribe to this channel? If, if so, yes. When notification comes, notify person, right? Instead of that, it becomes does the person subscribe to this channel if yes then uh, random output you know you know what I mean so the, the output would be if instead of being yes and it carrying on through it would be yes to a randomizer so it could still pretend to be no or one in ten chances be yes that is the sort of way they would shadow ban something and that trigger would come by the use of a word right so just to for those people that don't understand this stuff or and, and wonder how, how would it be possible to do like this and, oh no, he, he mu you, you must be paranoid because sometimes it comes through. This is why they randomize it. Um, because if you if you made it a straight band, you could measure that quite easily. You could take a bunch of tests. You can still measure it when it's randomized. You can do you can do tests, for example, let's say you got a thousand subscribers of that guy who I was just talking about, and you can say, right, who didn't who who, who got unsubscribed? when we've been sitting here videoing them subscribing, right? You would have to do this with VPNs and everything because they're so sneaky at Google. Um, they'll check if you're all in the one area. They'll check if they, 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 do, they do trace routes, for example. It's, it's happening automatically. These trace, a trace route basically bounces off different IP addresses from that are between you and the source, right? And the destination. So the source and the destination. So anyway, uh, that's I just wanted to cover that quickly. Now, with uh, with the Scottish independence, what I wanted to say was first of all, you know, what is what is Britain? Britain is effectively England. There's no such thing as Britain as a country. Yeah, I know. Contrary to what you might be told all the time, pushed down your throat, the UK and Britain don't exist. Britain, especially. Britain is just a name given to something. The Britannic, the Britannic Isles, or the 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 islands of Britannia, whatever you want to call it, are all the islands, including Ireland, as much as Ireland don't want to be called British, because they're not. Scottish aren't British either, neither are English. No one's British. It's, you may as well just call yourself European. 
it's in geography, okay? Um, the United Kingdom is a union of two kingdoms, the Kingdom of Scotland and the Kingdom of England. Now, you'll be well aware, or you may be aware, that there's, um, the royal family in England are actually illegitimate. They, they came from, there was a split in the Plantagenist uh, lines of, was it George, is either George or the one who chopped his wife's head off. And it was one of those lines where there was an illegitimate king born. And they, they if you, it, it, with modern, with modern sleuthing and um, and the inability of, um, of medieval, of the medieval courts and and uh, you know um, monarchy, to silence uh, just reality, <laughs> um, you can go and check and you can see that while the king was away, there was a uh, there was a child born. And that child later on became the king. Yada yada yada. So it's it's. Um, there's a, a guy whose last name is actually Loudon. He died the other year in Australia. He's actually the rightful king of England. And his, now his, one of his, I suppose, his eldest son. So in, his, in the outback of Australia, the Republicans, so they're, they're actually against um, the crown running Australia or any other colony that broke free and would never ever return to Westminster rule. But you have to understand Westminster did actually administer all these places, including India, right? Um, 63 countries, or I think that's about 63. They all break free, none of them want to go back. And yet, what you have now is you have the remainder of the UK, but they're effectively colonies as well, because all they're doing is being robbed, being used as, as status for, for England. So the word Britain doesn't really mean Britain, it means England. Um, if they were so British, British, British matters, then one of the things that happened years ago when Tony Blair, who's a war criminal, when he moved the Scottish maritime border from this direction to that direction, which goes against all international um, uh, regulation, maritime borders are always this way, straight across the, the uh, long latitudinal lines. When he did that to give England more oil, he was, he was showing that he understands that Britain is England, right? Because that's why he's trying to favour one side. If we're all one, one country, why wouldn't you rename the language that has been around longer than England has been around for, what it should be called, which is Britannic or British, because that's used as a, when you go around the world, you will actually see people refer to Britain as England. This is not a slip. This is not a mistake. This is on purpose. This is the, the, by the design. So <clears throat> I just wanted to, I'm going to make these videos short and I'll do one each day. Just to just to be little snippets. Now I know it's going to be it's going to be a little bit biased. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it open as possible. I'm not a person who shields information from myself because it's inconvenient. Uh, there's a lot of stupid things Scotland's done. So one of those those stupid things, for example, uh, well let, let's say that one of the reasons for keeping us in the union is the fact that Scotland has people will say it all the time. Oh, Scotland benefited heavily. No, some people in Scotland benefited heavily. Just the same as the traitors that sold our country down the river. For, as as uh, Robert Burns says, for for um, for a, what the hell is it again? You know what? I'm going to try to get the, the poem in there because he speaks old old Scots, you know. Uh, but basically, you, he betrayed your country for a few pieces of gold, you know. And, and that's that's entirely true. What right do they have to give a country away to a bunch of nobles in another country? Because understanding this is not about. England as such. This is about the people that rule the country known as England. I, I personally don't believe that any country should exist. I personally don't care whether a Pakistani or a Nigerian is running Scotland as long as they live here. And, and this goes against the narrative that the British nationalists, uh, the, the, um, the insular racist British nationalists will spread, is that um, we are just against the English. No, it's not true. Uh, English are treated very bad by their government, especially those north of uh, Birmingham and west of, uh, well, let's say the, the, the Cornwall Coast region, uh, uh, most of that. Um, yeah, pretty much most parts of England except for London <laughs> and maybe the Lake District. So, uh, yeah, so to say how, how this started off, it started off 300 and something like 315 years ago, something like that. And in that time, Scotland was actually doing all right. Um, we had some nobles lost the money um, because a ship was sank with all their wealth on it. They were going to open up 
parts of South America. Uh, Carolina was a Scottish colony, and they were also starting one in Panama to control the, the flow of, uh, you know, Scottish were great engineers. Carnegie was Scottish, you know. We, we are actually um, capitalists, which um, when you look at how much capital we own in our own country nowadays, it's insane. This is how you take over a country. You, uh, you stifle it, you rob its resources, like England has done all over the world. The 63 countries I spoke about, that is how England built its empire and built its own country, was the plunder of wealth from overseas. There's actually been no time in history in which England has actually just produced for itself. So I understand that it can be scary for people to think, what are we going to do? You know, That's a problem they have to figure out. Um, and the thing is, maybe, maybe the, the answer is just become, be more humble. You know, don't don't be so wasteful, because uh, England's a it is a beautiful country. Um, if you go, if you actually go around England properly, like I have, I've been to every nook and cranny of England, Scotland, Wales. Um, it's a beautiful place. Uh, you will think of something. You don't need to keep on robbing from countries, and especially the last four, the last three colonies you're robbing from, which is Scotland, England, and Northern Ireland, uh, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so yes, Scotland benefited, but if anything, that just means we have a we we had a, a ten percent to one third hand to play. Now, why do I say ten percent to one third? Because when the union started, we had one third of the population of um, of England. Now we have one tenth. That is by design. It's also by design that money gets spent in the centres like London, like Manchester, but more London. They don't really care about anyone outside of London, right? That's where the money gets spent there. The jobs get produced for there. They get produced for there for those people to come up to Scotland and then buy distilleries. So as my brother and I both noticed independently from each other while traveling with our ex-wives, we, um, that sounds like a band. Um, we discovered that most of these places are owned by English. And you could say, well, that's because the English are more enterprising than Scots. That's not true because all over, over the world, you will see where Scots have put a footprint, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, wherever else. We are actually very entrepreneurial people. Um, and that, besides the, the inventions like the telephone, the television, the, the radar, fax machine, all these other things that Scot Scottish people have invented, pushing well above our weight in this area, we have actually, we've actually been businessmen, entrepreneurs all around the world, besides inventors. So uh, why this unnatural thing? Why, why do people like me never live in Scotland? Well, I'll tell you right now, there's no jobs for me in Scotland. There's no opportunity for me, never has been. I've looked, I've come back here, I try to find work, I just never find it, I end up leaving again. So I'm basically exiled, not by choice. I'm, ex I'm economically exiled from my country. I have a choice to make. Either my life sucks or I live somewhere else, all right? So this is how you basically take over a country. You join it pretending you're, it's, it's a union, you economically stifle it, then you effectively uh, get to the stage where your people invade the other country when you economically stifle that other, the, uh, the host country depopulates. Well, this, while it depopulates, things become uh, cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. That's why all these castles around here are owned by Americans or English, usually English. And uh, again, I'm not against the person as long as you live here and as long as you you want the best for this country. And the best for this country is not being told what to do by a government in a foreign country, which is England, that was voted in by the people of that country. Because that is exactly what happens in Scotland right now. Yes, it is insane. I hear you thinking, imagine you're from America and every week, year you have to rub your hands together thinking, oh, I wonder who Brazil or Mexico is going to choose for us this year, who's going to be based in Mexico City or whatever it might be, right? That's exactly what we have in Scotland and it's absolutely sick, it's abhorrent, right? For three over 300 years. So um, <clears throat> why did we lose the last referendum? Well... There is a, a thing that I will link here, uh, and if I don't, please remind me in the comments section. Remember, I probably, I probably only have one or two viewers because um, even though I've got still, they've shed hundreds and hundreds of viewers off my YouTube channel and thousands off Twitter, but um, even though I still have probably about a thousand left or a couple of thousand on YouTube, I don't know what I've got. I have no idea what I've got left. Um, I probably only get notifications to maybe three people. Uh, I don't know that because you get them in the comments section. So if you see this, just tell me, hey, Craig, put that link to the Quora uh, article that shows how the fraud was actually accomplished in the 2014. I won't bother getting into it again now. Uh, so, but yeah, it was a blatant fraud. 
It, it will happen again, but it, uh, they're already taking away some of the steam in the sails because they're, what they're suggesting is that they're going to use um, they're going to use uh, our, our own systems for, for vote counting. They need to move faster. I really believe personally that the SNP are not moving fast enough. They're not going to strike while the iron's hot. They'll strike while it's cold as usual. Scotland, we're just a bit too gullible and nice as a people. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of other nice places haven't got the the most plunderous um, you know, government in the world right next to them as our neighbours. And that we do historically. The, the English Empire has been worse than the Roman Empire. So it is the worst in history as far as uh, sucking resources from other countries. And, uh, and the skullduggery and everything they get up to. So, yeah, I might leave it at that. Uh, let me think. Yeah, yeah, I thought it would be a good thing to start this new series because um, it's quite hard for foreigners to understand how this whole structure exists and why we put up with it and why Scots put up with it. What What is in the mind? So what I'm going to do in this series is go through the, what the mindset of people is because I know I can look at them and see how do you end up with um, cognitive dissonance where you, you think one thing but the reality and the th let's say you can look at some I'll take for example there's a guy called George Galloway he seems to be for independence for everywhere in the world like oh pro Palestine pro pro Catalonia pro everything you can think of but not pro Scottish independence even though he's from here so that that's cognitive dissonance you you think strongly one way and the situation's the exact same somewhere else, but you don't think the same way, that is insane. So I want to explain this insanity, how how people can be fed, basically, I don't know what you would call it, hmm, because you get blue pill, which means you're basically a system slave who takes all the propaganda the system has to muster together to feed to you, and you just, hmm, num, 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 eat it all up like a complete more unthinking moron like a quizzling and then you get red pill you wake up purple pill you're halfway there I don't know what you would call this psychedelic pill I don't know but anyway people start thinking insane thoughts um, and you end up having a case where you have a nation filled with I would call it traitors it's just people who are too daft to understand that they're being used by an evil force and that evil force is not England it's the rulers of England and that evil force by the way is similar to all the evil forces that run all the governments in the world and I've got other theories on that in Red Pill Diaries I'm not going to cross it over with what I'm talking about here so I'm going to leave it at that today or I might even do another one in Edinburgh but for the moment I'm in Glasgow let me just go outside and I'll show you where I am <clears throat> It's about 7.30 a.m. Well, about 7.20, I don't know, something like that. I'll just show you the end of the street here. I used to live in Glasgow for only about five months when I was a kid. There's the botanical gardens over here, you can't really see them that well. I'm going to walk there with my doggy. Yeah, you probably can't see much, but I'll leave it at that. Thanks.